Fist. We are at a crossroads, so to speak, where everybody can help but wonder, what next? Where do we go from here? Hmm, yes. More or less what I expected from you. But you got the picture. So, is your counter functioning? Have you checked it? Yes, it's all green. Double checked it. Stepan's in the green too. We don't need masks here. So, they were telling the truth. Who was telling the truth? Why won't you answer? Who were those people trying to kill us? Why would they shoot at you, the Order's commander? Explain something, at least! You owe us that! Well, I might as well drop the bomb now. The war did not end. What do you uh, mean, what? did not end? Let me finish. Most of our cities are destroyed. The rest of the country is probably under enemy occupation. To avoid new nuclear attacks against us, Command chose the only viable course of action. To play dead. To ensure radio silence, the shield system was created. A network of radio jammers covering Moscow and suburbs. So that some radio enthusiasts wouldn't bring more bombs down on our heads by whining on air. And it's one of these jammers that got disabled by the hands of those present here. Could you not have shared that before? Say, uh, before Artyom took that radio outside and caught all that radiation? No! I only got briefed half a year ago. Under a strict, you talk, you die policy. And then had to tell my people we were securing a weather station. Sir, with all due respect, if we can't go back, maybe we should advance and move on? I have an idea, but... Artyom, rather than carrying on with this silent disapproval of yours, check the airwaves. We should be out of the jamming range by now, so give it your best try. Look for transmissions from the Ark. Do you understand now why we are traitors in the eyes of command? We shut down a jamming station, shot up the guards, destroyed a patrol train, and ran away from Moscow. Who even needs a trial when the case is so clear? There's no way back now. Which means we have to continue moving forward. Command, what are you talking about? The Moscow Defense Command. Have you ever heard of the Invisible Watchers? I have, but they're just an urban legend. Not at all. They are command. Are you sure they care for more than just protecting their asses? You mentioned the Ark. What's that all about? If Artyom finds their signal, you'll figure everything out. Otherwise, there is nothing to talk about. Do you think finding that Ark of yours is going to fix everything? I do not. But if you have a better idea, then go ahead. Yes, I do. We have to find a good place for people from Moscow. Like Artyom always wanted. Giving them all to the enemy? A grand idea. I say, we solve our problems before moving on to saving all Moscow. All right? How is it going, Artyom? Found it yet? There's a whole world out here. A world where we could live. So far, we only know one thing for sure. Radiation levels are nominal. The air is breathable. But what about the rain? So what? You can't even breathe in Moscow. So? Does anybody live out here? We don't know. How will they treat us? I don't know that either. What would they do if they found out there are survivors in Moscow? Again, I don't know. Keep looking, Artyom. It's got to be a signal. But we do know we've been lied to. For 20 years, we've been lied to. We know they've been killing people. Collateral damage is inevitable in operations of such scale and secrecy. Yes, people have died. But the bombs killed tens of millions. Yet we are alive. We stayed alive throughout those years. Our Tom almost got killed. Is he just collateral damage too? Guess what? Yes! If you have to choose between the life of a single man, no matter how dear he is to you, and the lives of everybody else, all the dwellers of Metro, 
Then there's nothing to Attention. think about. Are you looking for a pattern? Come on, do your best. Would you say the same about me? Wait a moment, what was that? Listen, everyone! Area 18-5. I repeat, proceed to the rally point. Rally point location is code 18111 right. 79 Area 18-5. So the route from here should go uh, like this. This is our goal. So is this what you had in mind? Yes, this is it. The Ark Project is a whole city underground. Enormous stores, machines, the best experts. It is the Commander General's HQ. All of the country's leaders are there. They have already started the restoration work. We will tell them that Moscow is alive. It wasn't all for nothing. Everything will change. Everything. Do you get it? A new life is starting for all the survivors of the world. Yeah. By the way, are there any single women in that place? <laughs> Great reaction. So I think the moment calls for... Hmm. Bring it out to me. Bring what out, Colonel? Sir? That thing that's been sloshing about in your canteen. <laughs> you think I'm deaf for what? Ah, that. Uh, just a moment. I, I thought my ears were deceiving me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a short trip to the Urals, so we should make ourselves comfortable, I guess. Well, let's name this bucket of bolts at the very least, eh? Huh? It's about time. Let's go around and be done with it. <laughs> nah, go to hell. <laughs> Even better. Oh, come How on. How about Aurora, the Roman goddess of dawn and a cruiser of, uh, uh, you know what? That's better. <laughs> Not bad. I like it. Die, beautiful name. Sounds okay, but the cruiser of what? Yeah, I'll tell you later. Looks like it's decided. <laughs> Let's drink it! Hey, Artyom, let's take a look at that map. All right, we had a round that should be enough. You're back. Full steam ahead. Hi. Full steam ahead. Wow, that's share, some I distance. I wonder how long it will take. Oh, Anna. I was expecting an arrow from a Cupid, but I got a bullet from an ugly motherfucker instead. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you're okay? Because I know you. Just so you know, scars attract the ladies. And there's definitely a lot of those up ahead. I don't need a lot, really. It's quality that matters. Look, Artyom, you should at least get some of that fresh air. No mask. This is what you've always dreamed about. Artyom, a couple of words. Andrei Ivanovich, how long have you been working with those jammer people for? About a year, I guess. At first, they got me to sign up by singing of my experience helping people. Told me about weather stations and muted migration observers. I was proud to be helping those. Then, about two months ago, they loaded a bunch of people onto my Aurora. The guards took them outside and came back alone. Told me they took the people to a nearby station, but I knew it had came in years ago. A few days later, I was coming back from a run, stopped the train, went and found those people. Soon they understood I saw that ravine. Fed me the usual lies about the spies and whatnot. Did you believe them? Well, it sure seems safer to believe. But then, I just couldn't keep the charade up. 
Then the security officer told me straight. Whoever you speak to, dies. The whole station dies with him if need be. So, that's how it went. But when I saw you, and then Artyom, I knew I wasn't alone anymore. You can't just keep these things in. Now I understand why you helped us back then. Thank you. Don't mention it. God willing, it won't end up being done in vain. Yes. Have you ever taken a train beyond city borders? No. Didn't get a chance to go. I used to be a metro train engineer. I worked on the ring line. What a bore that was. Going round and round all day, round and round. And no real distance either. It used to take less than 30 minutes to make the lap. So I kept dreaming about how good it would be to just leave the metro and work on a real railroad. And travel around Russia. Not to run in circles like, like a rat in a maze. My wife wouldn't let me. We had kids, too. When I'd start going on about the railroad, uh, about my dream, she'd stop sleeping with me for months in protest. <laughs> yes. But when Moscow got hit by Tatiana and the little Sashenka were at home, I was working that day. Hirishka was waiting for me in the metro, returning from cram school. So we survived together that day. But in the end, I lost her too. TP. Ah, you know how it goes. So I'm driving here and talking to that yada in my head. See, I say, you couldn't stop me for good after all. Here I am. On a real railroad. A real engineer. I'm sorry I got so emotional there. Oh, it's my fault. I'm really sorry. And thank you for telling me. Hey, Artyom! Is there any music on the air? Understood. Because the war was still on. Security was paramount. Our people would have understood. So please, do the same. You would have spilled the beans to everyone in Metro. You're a goddamn Prometheus, a messiah. You must lead the people out of the caves. Do you think you would have saved anyone? Remember that jammer? What if Moscow has been found out because of you? What if there are missiles inbound? Anyways, no matter what they think of me, I'm no deserter and will never become one. I'm ready to bear full responsibility for everything. But if there is even the smallest chance to earn my pardon, I will take it. Which means that we, like a runner that tripped, need to keep running ever faster just to keep balance. And don't dare you trip us all over again. Am I understood? I hope I am. Anyway, at least now we know where to run. So, go back inside and take a look at the map. Our route is pretty obvious now.
Can you feel how sweet the air is without a mask? Or not just sweet, so many shades of taste it has. A weird feeling, eh, my friend? I remember you telling me how you took your mask off atop a stunken otar. When you honed those missiles in on the dark ones, was the air bitter then? Who knows, though? Had you not launched those missiles, you'd probably never have climbed that building or received that signal. Life is weird, huh? One random event drags another with it, like links in a chain. And you are pulling that chain out of a deep, dark well. The links emerge from the dark water. And what drink is in that bucket that's on the end of the chain? That's a mystery. That's what I often think about when facing a choice. You can't drop the chain either. You always have to drink from that bucket. Well, bottoms up, I suppose. So, how does it feel to be the Moses who yanked on this particular chain? <laughs> Is it dumb to think about such things when all I ever did in life was carry out orders? Well, I'm not called idiot for nothing. Still, I would like to know what's on the end of your chain. Look, if there's no radiation, that means we can bring everyone out of Moscow. It doesn't matter if there's radiation or not, Comrade American. The citizens of Moscow will have to stay cool. Why? We're just a short way from the city. And the radiation's gone. Things might have been that easy in your America, but life has never been so easy here. Even now, we woke up saviors of the metro, and by lunchtime, we're enemy spies, saboteurs, <laughs> trade thieves, and what for? Something we thought was true turned out to be a lie, and that is enough for them to want us dead. The Hansa bosses must have known that we could live up here, but the public didn't know that. Who'd want to stay down in the metro if we told them? We cannot tell them. If they are ready to make men's meat out of old ladies and kids to keep their secret, what do you think would they do to you, Uncle Sam? Huh? We can't go back. We can't use radio. Remember the jammers? And even if you pull a perfect round ball and break through back into the metro, do you expect they all just believe you and go, Yes, Moses, lead us out of this Egypt? Can you even imagine the death toll? Take your average station dollars. Even if the Hansa guards didn't shoot them, how far would they get? Right to the nearest mutant den, most likely. We are safe here, speeding along on this Eastern Express. They are not as lucky. Not at all. What if there was a proper evacuation? <laughs> and who would do that? Hansa's people? The ones that kept us under lock and key for 20 years? Or, or us too? Besides, Getting the people out of Moscow is not the end of it. You have to settle them somewhere, provide food. No, brother. I do get where you're coming from, but this matter is way more complex than it seems. I guess you're right. All this clean air went to my head. So, wait, does this mean the Colonel was in the know? Zrank does seem to suggest that. Besides, he led negotiations with Hansa. Where would we be without them after the D6 debacle? They gave us weapons and recruits to replenish our losses. We, on the other hand, our competence does not stretch beyond thinking cozy thoughts and keeping the fools in the metro from killing each other off. Remember, if not us, then who? You are too smart for your own good, idiot. No masks needed, the railroad runs through the whole country. Hmm, <laughs> as far as we want, I reckon. As for Yamantau, it's about 2,000 clicks away. No, I, I mean, how far can we get with the fuel we have? What's this machine's mileage? Ah, that! Uh, yeah, it certainly is a coal guzzler, this thing. But then again, there should be coal stores at every station. And if we don't find any, we could still burn firewood. Demir. Uh, you 
see I made a mistake of stocking up on filters. While I could have gotten a whole bunch of MREs for the same ammo, or, or a new hazard suit, I wish I'd known there'd be no need for them. The Corporal sold them way too hard, that bastard. <laughs> Get them while they last. He even gave me a book as a free extra. Quotations from Charman Mao, uh, the, 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 do you know this writer? Uh, Mao? Anyway, here I am like a fool with the stupid book and the filters. Well, we could really use that Milgrade ammo now. <laughs> you, you never know who or what we might meet. You're not giving the book enough credit. At the very least, it contains a whole world of wisdom on fighting the war against the imperialism. Which we might encounter on the way, even though so far we just seem to be fighting our own. Yeah, Anna's pulling no punches this time. Perhaps she shouldn't have. It, it's not like the Colonel understands everything. Mm, now who's in the right here? Uh, whoever's not wrong, obviously. Well, who's not wrong then? He who does nothing and says nothing too. Give me a break. Who's in the right now? Everybody is, brother. And nobody. Uh, I shouldn't have asked. I am not bothered when I'm not understood. I am bothered when I don't understand. of you. We all remember the way you fought back in D6, so no matter what lies ahead, we're with you. You can count on us. Yeah, yes. As for me, I'm running a little inventory check. Yeah, it is kind of cramped in here. And I'm thinking of making something of a workbench. So that's all the instruments we get, and everything else would be within arm's reach. With no workbench, you just lose small components. We'll use this place to work on the weapons. Cleaning, boiling, keep out of everybody's way, and keep them from messing with my stuff. Ah, well, we'll have to take turns, of course, but we'll manage. So, if you find any weapons you'd like to keep, I'll store them for you here on the Aurora, and you can come back to exchange them. You'll get them back in their best shape ever, don't you doubt. Ah, boy, have I cleaned and oiled a lot of weapons in my life. Hmm, factory, and homemade, too. Some of those were just amazing, so unusual. So, if you have any weapon-related questions, I'm your man. And weapons, they are like girls. They need attention. You clean your weapon well, you oil it, you check the ammo, because these dirty ammo caps do get rusty sometimes. But if you put your heart into it, the weapon never fails. Ah, well, I'll just finish oiling this one, then start on another.
because frankly speaking, I'm a bit tired here. The only good thing about this job is that you forget it's winter. <laughs> if only you didn't have to pay for this comfort later, with your whole body aching. I heard that monotonous labor cost you. Well, it's not a lie. I do feel this calm, you see. It's what says it's a dynamic meditation. That philosopher doesn't come here to meditate too often, though. 